Well, hello, y'all. Welcome back. Our decluttering challenge and series continues. Today, I am sharing with you guys part one of my pantry makeover yet again. I did this last year. A lot of what I did has worked really well. My bins, my labels, I'm happy with most of that. But as you can see, we bought pre-cut shelves from Home Depot and tried to make that work. And there's just a lot of wasted space. And you kind of have like this cliff for things to fall off of from the side. So then you end up kind of pushing things even farther away from that. It just, it's a lot of wasted space, you guys. And I felt like height wise and everything, one of the things I've learned in this house is that I need to use as much vertical space as possible, as well as up top here. You can see a vertical space wasted, just, just space wasted. So fear not though, I'm not just going to, you know, waste the money obviously on these shelves. That was my number one reason for not doing anything. You know, about six months in, I realized that we needed to do something different. Uh, but I was like, oh, I just, I bought these shelves and everything. I don't want to waste the money. If you watched my closet declutter, then you probably recognize these shelves because I moved some of them into my closet and you will see some of them resurface again in future um, organization and decluttering videos because they are making the rounds to various closets and other places in our house where we needed some shelving and storage. So I feel better knowing that I didn't just waste the money in, on those. Like, listen, you guys, I am many things, but one of the things I am not is afraid to say that I did something incorrectly or I need to do something differently. I, I don't I don't feel like, oh, I'm just such a failure. I made a mistake. It's OK. We try. We do the best we can. Uh, and like I said, I don't want to waste things, but I also don't want to continue to not have something be functional and work for me just because I'm too like prideful to say that I, I didn't um, I didn't make the right choice now. The secondary piece to that is obviously like purchasing the new unit that I want to put in here. I decided that I wanted to go with a true like organization unit. Um, so I purchased something from Modular Closets on Black Friday. It was really nice because I was able to put in the dimensions of everything, perfectly design it to basically completely fill the space. And uh, with Black Friday, I was able to get, I want to say it was 25% off of the price. So unfortunately there were some shipping issues so that's why this video is going to be broken up into two videos and it's also you're going to notice it takes place over a span of time because i waited um, until about sometime in december i believe is when i started this project but when i started putting together a new unit uh, i didn't have all the boxes and i didn't realize it. there were shipping problems and stuff so it wasn't their fault it was you know the delivery services issue. But either way, we're going to start by just taking apart this closet, which I've basically already done at this point. The other problem that I wanted to solve was that these new doors that we replaced um, our old doors with, they didn't close well. They needed to be shaved down a little bit in certain areas. My husband had to cut them to fit. We did the best we could at the time, but we just really noticed that it was driving me nuts how they would like catch and not close all the way. And at the bottom, one part of it would like drag the ground. And if you have kids or pets specifically, you know that if you have a door that like drags the ground, that thing collects hair like nobody's business um, and crumbs and other things. So what I'm doing is going around now and I'm using, I'm actually using, I believe that's my Nat King Cole record, but it's a just, you know, a thinner piece of like cardboard type material to slide that between the doors and mark where it starts to catch. So I know the areas that I need to shave down in order for the door to fit and close properly. So that's what I'm doing right now is just going around and using that record to figure that out. And then I'm just going to take the doors off the hinges and I'll take those outside in a little bit later in the video and uh, use my planer to slowly start to shave them down. Now that's the key is that my poor husband did this with like some hand tools that uh, just it just didn't work well. That's why it's kind of jaggedy. And so I went and purchased a, you know, a hand planer, like a electric hand planer. And that's going to make this task much, much easier. While it might look like my husband didn't do it right. And I had to swoop into the rescue. Tis not the case. He didn't have the right tools. And I think one thing we've learned for sure is that the right tools make all the difference. Now the other problem, as you can see, the drywall screws and stuff that we use to hang those shelves, this house, again, old, weird, thin drywall in some places, studs not placed correctly, just difficult things to work around. So what we decided to do after using our stud finder and just not feeling like we could 
reasonably install something new here and feel like it would be secure. We just had oddly placed studs. So what we decided to do was go buy some boards. My husband was outside cutting them for me and then bringing them in, but it was honestly kind of a pain because it's like one row, it would catch. The next row, it wouldn't. I don't know what's going on behind this wall. I gotta be honest with you, I don't know. The other thing you didn't get to see in this video is that my husband closed off that electric box for me since we were gonna cover it up. He had to like close off the wires and seal them up and stuff. And I cut the power and everything, you guys, like a good girl. But before I did that, I was just trying to take the faceplate off. This is why you should always cut the power. And I zapped the absolute shnataki mushrooms out of myself, okay? So sad that wasn't on film <laughs> because it probably was pretty funny. He swooped into the rescue and took care of the electrical. I just, I, I might need to take like a class. Maybe I could take a class at the community college on how to do electrical work because I just, I struggle. Anyways hanging this up, getting our, our secure boards. So it's basically like a shiplap-esque look, but without the fine tuning. And, you know, we're not trying to make this look like we would if we were going to hang this in our living room. It's really just meant um, to be something secure for the new shelving units to fit into, to hold on to really well. So we don't feel like anything is going to tip or fall. And once that's finally done, I'm just gonna go around and fill in the, the holes there. And again, I'm not trying to fill in the gaps between the boards. Those aren't interlocking boards. It's, um, it's not going to look perfect, but I don't care because it's the background for this and we were just trying to solve a problem fairly quickly so that we could get the pantry installed, you know? When you have your entire pantry storage of food sitting out on your kitchen counter amongst eight children and seven or eight dogs. I, I've lost count how many dogs we have, I'll be honest. You know that you want to get that stuff back into the pantry as soon as possible. And now we move on to painting. I just used a, a off-white, whitish colored paint. I'll see if, if I can remember which one it is. I will write it in the description box. But I just uh, used what we already had. Again, I wasn't going to be too picky about this. And uh, went through and painted the cracks first. Always do the crack first. <laughs> uh, and then took a roller. I don't remember uh, what happened. I didn't remember my battery died or what. But I filled in the cracks and then used a roller to paint the rest of it. But that clip is gone to the abyss. So you'll just have to trust me that that's what I did. And I kept this part in because it was so funny. I kept telling Benjamin not to touch the paint because it was wet. He went over there and later when he thought I wasn't around and when I snuck up behind him, whoop, he was like, oh, uh oh, am I in trouble? Um, <laughs> nope. And then he's like, ha ha, let me test you. I will touch it multiple times and see what you're going to do. It was dry already. So obviously I didn't care, but it was like, it was pretty funny. Anyways, now we take the door outside and we use the electric planer to, you know, trim it and dogs run amok. And I'm going to bring this door back inside and reinstall it. But the other thing that I really wanted to do was to paint the doors and potentially the trim on a lot of our interior doors. It's a look that I really like. This color, Coco Malt. I saw this on Pinterest and I loved the color. I was really excited about this color because I loved it on Pinterest. You can see me here wondering why does this not look how I expected it to? So I hum and haw and then decide uh, that instead of 
painting this whole door and not liking it, I'm going to acknowledge that from the jump, I don't like it. And I'm going to go back to Home Depot and buy a different color. The color that I chose um, is a color from Bear, actually from Home Depot's paint line, and I believe it's called Silver Celadon. I absolutely love this color. I don't even know how to describe it. A very light, ish bluish grayish greenish that's a terrible explanation and of course the weird lighting um, from the hallway and the bathroom and then my external light that i'm trying to light this tiny little space with it's not really doing it justice and then also i don't know what my camera was doing here you know i was trying to film me painting this door and my camera was like we're just not going to focus on anything nothing you could struggle through a few seconds of blurry footage now you could see the difference you know between the stark white of the doors and then that kind of silver celadon color and again i went back and forth do i want to paint the trim around the door and the answer was absolutely yes i felt that that would uh, really bring it all together and uh, it definitely did so i really really like this and i may likely be painting a lot of our interior doors this color uh, because well i just really like it all right you've come along with me for the ups and downs the highs and lows. I'm gonna add the trim inside to those edges just so they are more finished um, and, and look more more done and not just as severe as just a cut piece of wood. We're gonna add trim and then uh, part two of this video is going to be installing the new pantry unit and uh, filling it back up with our food and sort of the grand reveal. That video will just be a few days away, y'all. It is it is done, the project is done, so you won't have to wait long, uh, but I definitely wanted to break this up. Part two to come, thank you guys so much for joining me on this decluttering journey and challenge, and uh, I'll see you guys again soon, bye. <laughs>